What's up, beautiful people at Bailcast? Someone just wrote that in my comments. Uh, How many B's did they put in? Four. So I was like, oh, oh they listen to the podcast. Thank That's you so awesome. much. Yeah, so thank you guys cute. so much for listening to the podcast. We've been doing this for how long now? Like a year? I think so. Wow. Something like that. That's so cool. Yeah, it is super cool because um, we get to connect on a different level. You get to hear our thoughts on a more intimate level. Yeah. Um, no, it's been really fun because now I'm like, I, 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 not that I have more free time, but I've just been able to balance my life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot, um, like 10 to 30 minutes for me to engage with fans and stuff. And, and I've been loving it. Every day? Yeah. Wow, every day. I really love good. it. Yeah, I love it because I get to comment. I get to reply. Um, I get to, you know, write back on DMs and I've been having a really good time. That's where I saw the boo 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 boo. Yeah, the word fans always made me feel weird. Me too. It's I don't like, like it. Yeah, because like I think what's different is uh, like I don't consider myself like a celebrity, right? Same. So I'm not like Justin Bieber. And so when he has fans. You're not even close to Justin Bieber. He's <laughs> the know. best. So like uh, so when you're a celebrity, you got big old fans. You got paparazzi. They're following you around. And there's like this level of like almost um, – almost like god god like past human type of aura yeah like you're above it yeah you're like, floating kind of yeah like when i see like if i were to catch justin bieber like at a restaurant i'm like oh shit it's justin bieber yeah you know like any like i've seen david beckham i like when i see him like, oh, you've this. seen him in a moving car yeah but i was still like this i was at the oh. crosswalk i was like oh shit Oh, you weren't you weren't in a car? No, I was at the crosswalk. Oh, why didn't you just get on his hood and go, "I love you"? Because <laughs> I I should have. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, and then, so I think for me, coming from YouTube, what's different I think about it is a lot of celebrities they go, "Okay, this is entertainment. I want entertaining the world. I want to get my stuff out there. I want to ascend to this level of stardom." Yeah. And, I want to be a legend. Yeah, and then so I think when when there's this fan concept, I and understand. And they're actually talented. We're not that talented. Exactly. I understand <laughs> that, right? Like you can you go, okay, this guy acts, this guy sings, right. this guy does whatever, What do right? we do? For me, when I, when we start on YouTube, uh, I think originally our sketches, yes, we're trying to be like in living color. But then once we started moving away from sketches and we're not like uh, traditional comics or traditional – um, comedians or actors and writers anymore and we became more like lifestyle vloggers and more personalities I feel like we're way more at a down to earth level yes a lot of people know who we are yeah a lot of people know who we are but um, it feels weird when people even tell me hey I'm your biggest fans yeah. and it even feels weird for me to go hey for all my fans out yeah, there it does. but I do use that word because that's what's common knowledge yeah. versus if I were to say hey my audience out there it seems so sterile and it feels Wait, like why don't you call them your Bartolopians because I also think that's stupid yeah it is pretty stupid I'm you just know? kidding yeah like all the people that are like hey what's up my whatever it's it's, it's kind of corny to my, me my 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 geo Geo nation this is yeah like those yeah, are it's, it's kind of it's kind of corny to me <clears throat> i mean it's corny for us other people it fits um if it fits what other do we people call them? what do we call them what do we call our peoples our fans what the fuck you just said you don't like fans. i don't I'm like, like it but that's the only word that's out there so i don't know what else to use uh like our friends our friends out there you guys are all our friends. i like that i like that and you got phlegm again Friends and phlegm. <laughs> I was trying to just play it off. They do friends <laughs> well, I heard the vibrato of the phlegm, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> Gross. Is this the phlegm that's so nasty? Yeah, that's I was like, ah, so oh, that's so nasty. Yeah, maybe I'll um, call them friends. Yeah, hey, and then friends. Like, I like calling calling them like either like my brothers and sisters. Yeah, and I I I don't do this publicly, but I'm gonna start doing it. What are you in gonna my do? head, what are you the gonna brothers do? and sisters, or like wow. like our friends. That's friends. Tight. You guys are our friends now. You're not our fans. You're fucking friends. So now when we see you guys in public and stuff, we we'll be like, "Yo, my friend, where have you been?" Yeah, you better not say, "I'm your biggest fan." Be say, like, "I'm your I'm big, biggest I'm your, friend." <laughs> your best friend. I'm like, "You are? Hell yeah!" That'd they're they're tight. probably more best friends than you're a best friend. They might know more details about me than you. No way! I know way more about you than anybody knows about you. Hey, we did an episode where we tested each other. Yeah. And I beat you. No, we, the score wasn't kept accurately, so who knows what really went down. All right, fine. But yeah, I agree with you on the whole uh, fans thing. That's absolutely weird, huh? agree. Yeah, absolutely agree because I don't see myself above anything else. Like I meet some really interesting people, aka fans, but not really, aka more friends. Um, so when I meet these these friends of ours, 
I'm just like, whoa, you have such an amazing story. Like you need to be on, like we need to reverse our roles. You I need feel to have that the, all the time, the fan base. especially at fitness events. Mm. Cause uh, I'll meet people and they're like, dude, Bart, I've been looking up to you. And I look at their Instagram as full as like squatting like 700 pounds. I'm like, what is there to look up to? I can't even break 500. All these people that are looking up to me, watching my content, they're way stronger. I'm like, you go make a YouTube channel so I could learn from you. Yeah. Obviously, you're doing something right if you're 19 and you're like deadlifting 900 pounds. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I think about it the exact same way where I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm just a per- you're way cooler than me. Stop talking about me. Let's talk about you. And then and then we have a conversation about them and I'm just completely inspired and motivated. And I'm like, wow, I got lucky. I got yeah. lucky. I, I, I slept with the right guy. Duh. I told you, if you follow me, you are going to have a good life. I told you that from the beginning. No, you didn't. Yeah, you said you're like, fine, I'll sleep with you. Stupid. Tell the truth. That is the truth. That's not. Fuck you. That's not the fuck truth. You I didn't too. say. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. Um, that. Don't say it like that because people are going to take that as I truth. I just pretty much backed up what you said. You said you slept with the right guy. It was guy. a joke. And then you agreed making it real. <laughs> No, I'm still joking. I'm double uh, doubling down on your joke. All right, fine. What's so itchy? Or just I just felt like a little itch right here. But yeah, so now you guys are our friends. We're all friends. What right. up, bear friends? Hey. What up, bear friends? Yeah. Did you ever feel like, um, are you ever, I guess, um, used to the stardom and the attention? Never. Never, ever, ever, never, 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 So never. like if you're in a supermarket and then someone like approaches you, do you ever go... Oh, cool. Like, oh, my God, people still know me. Or are you more like people probably know who the fuck I am? No, I'm more like like uh, when they make eye contact or they look like they they recognize me. I never think, oh, they recognize me from YouTube or whatever I do. Yeah. I always go, oh, is there someone behind me? And then there's no one behind me. And then I'm like, OK, maybe they think I'm someone else. So then I just ignore it because I don't even think about like, oh, they recognize me from what I do. Yeah. So then I kind of chill and I just keep going about my thing until they come up and then they're like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, oh, okay, it is from that. So that's like how little I feel like I get recognized. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Like it's still, it's still like me. One I thing think. that I think is really cool is uh, when we do like the shows with JK stuff, like me and Joe or like these days with Danger Boys and me, Casey and Steve and Joe go out and do these shows. Um, the audience is much bigger because our following got bigger, right? But the part that's really, really cool that I know that for sure they're, I guess, more of my fan than everyone else because it'll be a sea of like Asians. And then then there's a lot more other people, too. Now, like it's pretty multi-ethnic, but I'll say 50 percent is Asian. And then you'll see all the dudes that are jacked. They're jacked. Okay. so there's a bunch of jack dudes. And then what's awesome, it's like as soon as I see them, like throughout the audience, I'm like, that's tight. You lift, you lift, you lift, you lift. And then they're the ones when they see me, they get like, ooh, I can't wait to meet you. And then like the biggest dudes all of a sudden go like this. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, that's so cool. Cause, and then and they wear the barbell. Yeah. And then they're all like powerlifters. And it's just cool to see like this whole like movement arise. And you can tell the difference over time. You know, like like I, I one of the things that we hated before about shows is we're trying to get into like a deep conversation about shows. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Last question to end the show, like during the Q and A section, and the last question's always wasted. Bart, how much do you bench? It's always some stupid ass question, right? And now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect, it's because the amount of fitness knowledge that's available back then was almost zero. So fitness or even people working out was just like a mystery. But now, because everyone's into fitness, kind of. And all the fans bench more than I do. I guess they don't care to ask. So that's, I don't hear stupid questions like that. And now you just see it manifested in the fans' bodies or in the friends' bodies. They're just there and like this, which I've never seen this many jacked Asian before, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, I think that is definitely a thing. Like there's there's more information out there that people want to find. Yeah. And they're actually um, uh, incorporating. But I think another one is as we grew, we... Not not that that we did this on purpose, but I think we stayed authentic and true enough 
that the fans sorry fuck i gotta get used to it that the that our friends um grew with us yeah because those questions came from probably a younger audience yeah they were probably in college or whatever but they were probably younger um because now i know why do i keep saying um so much i keep catching myself going um anyway but now i find myself like either surveying like my my followers or i like asking them hey give me some like let me know what you're going through let's have a conversation and then they'll write Back in the day, it would be like jokey stuff, but now it's very serious and it's not like just one dimensional. Yeah. So I I believe that it comes with just everyone growing together at the same time. Yeah. What I also see too is uh, mm. a lot of interracial couples. I love it so which much. Which is so cool. Oh, I love it. And like a lot of them like that, especially the ones that are Asian and Mexican, they're like, we're just like you guys. Yeah. And recently at the Fit Expo, I met an older couple that was like that. So, so he we're was like a, them. No, they're older. Than us. Yes. Yeah, so we're like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except op- opposite switch. The okay. guy was uh, Hispanic. The, the mom was Asian. And then they look like they're probably mid 40s or late 40s. And um, they're like, oh, yeah, our kids like eight or 10 or something like that. And then they're like, we're just like you, but switched. And then so everything that you guys like talk about or like bicker about, can relate. it's the opposite. But yeah. but they relate in the same way. <laughs> and then I'll meet ones that are just like us. And then uh, even the ones that aren't like us, like maybe like a, like a Asian Indian with another Asian guy or whatever. And they still relate somehow because a lot of the interracial type of uh, topics and issues that arise yeah. are, are universal so it's just cool to kind of see like all these people kind of just gravitate towards us because they're like oh these guys are different but we're different too and then our love is like their love yeah, yeah i love it i absolutely love it i love i love hearing different stories and, and when people share and are open like that i love it the thing that and i still appreciate but the thing i that i um not can do with that what's the right way to say it like the thing that i feel not sad, that's not the right word, but it feels... The least happy about? I guess so. The least happy about is when they just want to take a picture and then they walk away. Because I'm like, I want some sort of connection. Like, I want to hear, like, a little bit about you. Where are you from? Where are you about to do? Even if it's like, what were you just doing, like, a minute before you saw me? Sometimes like, some they're sort too of nervous, thing. though. I understand it 100%, but that's just the part where I'm like, oh, I didn't get to connect with this person. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's how I feel, too. Yeah. Because I'm like... Sometimes just from the person showing up, there's a really cool story, you know, whether like this guy has a cool denim jacket with a bunch of pins or you could just tell like, uh, oh, there's like paint on his shoes. I'm like, oh, this guy's a painter. There's just like people that just show up and there's a cool story and you can't wait to get to that story or conversation, but they just want to take a picture and they leave. And you're yeah. like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. But you could tell that they're really nervous. So I just give them their space. But yeah, I mean. That's neither here nor there, but what, I wish what, I could connect more. With the way that things are growing, um, <clears throat> do you ever like, because one thing I think uh, a lot of people that are in the limelight, that um, I think when you're big, like Justin Timberlake, you can just take three years off, right? And then you could just be in the darkness and come back and refresh. And then almost like how uh, these days, you know, a lot of people have been doing like in social media detoxes. Like, it doesn't even matter if you have a following. It's just they're just so used to and glued to their phone that they're like, oh, man, I need a, I need a detox, you know, and then just like reset the mind. Unfortunately, because that's our job, it's kind of hard for us to do that, especially for a long period of time. Like, I think some of our peers have done it for like a weekend or a week. Is there a point where you feel like you would like to detox for like a year or something? Mm. I don't know because I don't think I I don't think I share enough to the point where I have no sense of like myself and I'm like like everything is so tied into it. I don't think I've shared enough about myself like that because the people that I have seen that take that detox, they go all out oh. like they're documenting what they eat. They document what they just went through that day. They document through their, their they document their problems. They document like a lot. And then not some only people do think do we do video, that. Some yeah, people, we, we really don't. But some uh, like they'll do a video component, then they do a picture component, then they do a long ca- caption component. Yeah. And then within the video, they do like little mini story, like little mini um, like paragraphs in there. And it's just a lot of work and effort. Yeah, they're really good. Um, They're really, really good. But I, I can see why the burnt out burnout happens because it's just they're just so intricate with everything. And I'm like, at what point do you or maybe they have a system that I don't know of, but at least from an outside perspective, I'm just like, 
wow, you invest a lot of your time into this, you know, at all while they're still balancing like running a business or like working or doing some other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I could see why you wanted that detox. So you don't feel like you need it? Uh, not yet, at least. Not oh. yet. I think there's a lot that I don't share, not on purpose, but I just feel like um, I share what I need to or what I want to share that I feel like I want to remember and that, or I feel like someone can gain some value from. So I share that and then I just keep building in the background. Do you feel like that? Because you uh, post pretty frequently, actually. Yeah, sometimes I, I, I feel like I, I, it'd be nice to um, take like some time off. But what sucks is with the algorithm, like even with YouTube or any of all that stuff, you take time off and you come back and it hurts you. Yeah. Like David told me he took um, all of December off or like at least the Christmas part of it off. Because he's like, fuck it. I just want to be with family and all that. And he was like, oh, to be honest, I think I was just being lazy. <laughs> and, and then he came back and he lost 3,000 followers and his likes dropped by 50%. And he goes, wow. what the fuck? God damn, what the, what, what, the fuck, what the fuck? So he was like, shit. So now he was like, and, and like, when when that's your livelihood, those metrics matter, mm -hmm. you know? So he, he like, they really matter. It's not like a matter of like, oh, I'm not popular. It's like those people, like those brands that work with you, or people that want to cast your work, they, they, they look, look at, at those, those numbers. So those yeah. are, they, they determine your career. Yeah. So he's like, oh shit, I fucked up. You know, I gotta, I gotta fix all those things. Yeah. And for me, I, I think I would like to, but I think one thing that helps me out too is, I have a hard, um, like after 7 p.m., a stay off my phone rule. So I think like almost every day I have a like a daily detox. Mm. So like I think I've been talking, I talked to some like social media, like expert guru type people. And a lot of those guys, they they uh, recommend posting at all like random. Obviously, you have your your high traffic times, but also during the uh, all different times of the day so you can hit different audiences so you can hit the people that do go online at nine or go on at three or go on whatever you know and then so i'm not going to be able to take advantage of that because my posting is so regular it's either like 10 a.m or like noonish or seven but at that at least when i do that and it's a regular schedule time it allows me to take the break that i need to be like mentally sane yeah okay that's awesome um before i continue we're gonna pause real quick for our first sponsor Shout out to our first sponsor, which is Grove. Grove Collaborative is an online marketplace that delivers all natural home beauty and personal care products directly to your door. So if you've been wanting to go green and you don't want to have these harmful detergents or toxins or soap, especially since we have a little kid yeah. or you just want to be more eco-friendly and you don't like that every time you wash your dishes, there's all these crazy chemicals that are going down the drain. Grove.co is perfectly for you because everything that they have is healthy, effective, eco-friendly, and affordable. And they have everything from your some of our favorite brands like Mrs. Myers. Every single one of our hands up is Mrs. Myers at our house. Uh, seventh Generation Method and even Burt's Bees. I love Burt's Bees Chapstick. And some of their best-selling Grove-made products is the Seeding Tree Free Paper Towels, their Grove Detergent Dispenser that cuts plastic waste by 80% and 100% recycled plastic trash bags all in one place at grove.co. So uh, for a limited time only, you guys, our friends, can go to grove.co slash bail, B-E-A-W, and you will get a free five-piece cleaning set from Mrs. Meyer and Grove, which is a $30 value. So go to grove.co slash bail, B-E-A-W, to get this exclusive cleaning offer and they even have a vip subscription service so if you're tired of always ordering products every single month you can sign up for their vip plan and they'll just send it to you like you can look at how much you use uh, every day and just send it to you and then you'll have all of these all natural eco-friendly cleaners and products sent to your door on a regular basis and we're back so wait so you're saying that you didn't need it so at first you said you did need it and then you ended with you don't need it. No, I'm saying that I would like to. Okay. I, I think I would like to, but um, one thing that helps me with it is that I have a daily detox I almost. See. So um, it's not necessary that I must have one gotcha. because I'm doing one almost every day. Gotcha. Um, for me, as you were talking, I was thinking about why I don't feel like I need a detox. Um, and as I'm thinking about it, I still don't feel like I need a detox, but what I would like is a different type of detox. And this detox would be just post whatever the fuck you want 
It doesn't matter if it makes sense. Ding, ding, ding. That's, That's me. That's what I want. <laughs> you don't post whatever the fuck I you do. want. No, you don't. Because your stuff is still pretty calculated. There's... But that's just who I am, though. Because you like, so you know to hit the family, you know to hit the fitness, you know to hit the relationship. Like, that's still very, for me, I'm like, um, wow, I just like that sunset. I'm going to take a picture and just, it doesn't make any sense. But the thing is, those four things, those are me. That's my pillars. So, like, I'm a very simple person, as you can tell. I can eat the same thing every day. I buy pants. I go, oh, these joggers are nice. Let me just buy them in every single color so I don't have to think about it. You know, and all the clothes in my closet I can literally mix match all of them. They all look good together. They don't have to be paired. So I'm so simple that uh, I just pick four categories or five categories and everything that I post is going to fall in that category. So that's that's how I do it. And then but then my likes are like this, you know, some of them, it's like people really care about some they don't really give a shit about. But then for me, they all they make me happy. Like there's a time where like I made like a mush with which is one of my favorite foods, which is like shabu meat rice like spinach or cabbage ponzu squiggly all around and i'm like this is my favorite shit i just put it out there and uh surprisingly it looks like garbage but it got a lot of likes i'm like cool and then there's other times where like i have this really deep thought you know i got this epiphany and i can't wait to share it with people and it's like a silhouette of me like looking over a cliff and it's oh like, god i'm already bored yeah and then i'm like eh, i don't care but that those are those are all of those are real moments to me i see yeah yeah, everything I post are real moments to me, but I think um, for me, I just view it as like, how does this add value? Um, and then I'm like, like, I'm always thinking of my story. Like, what story am I trying to tell? So I'm always yeah. trying to stay within this story of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, what's your story? Um, well, it just changed. So now my new, because I've had like, I've talked about this on so many podcasts. I just have, I've had so many life breakthroughs Yeah. that whatever story I had in 2019 is now completely gone. And I have a brand new story in 2020 where all I want to do is just uh, experience love, give love and um, and and yeah, just be surrounded by love. Like that's just that's just my new story now. So I'm always trying to find any avenue where I can experience love, give love um, and and just talk about it. That's all awesome. Yeah. So if that could be self love, that could be couple love, that could be friend love that can be sibling love that can be love for a stranger love could be just love for animals nature just any type of connection and love in that way i'm always like i would love to be your instagram manager and a writer for your instagram why because there's so much there because it's all about love so it'd be cool if like um there's a picture of me like like strangling your neck and then your eyeballs are about to pop out of your face. <laughs> I like it already. And then, but the caption is about something like the positivity that you see. You know, like yeah. like, like look the, at how look at how small her neck is, and it just it, it just fits so perfectly around my hands or like. Well, in it's my from hands your voice. So that I don't have. It's to. from your Instagram. Oh. So it'll be like look uh, how much look at how much passion he has for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> oh man, I love it so much because like mm. Papa Bear knows that every time he hugs me, it's always around my chest, and he knows my neck feels so neglected. Mm -hmm. And this time, he concentrated all of his love on my neck. Yeah. Hashtag spread love. Yeah, and I'm just chugging the shit out of you. Yeah, my eyes are popping out, and I'm like, look at my eyes. They just they can't, they want to jump out and see more. Yeah, and then another caption would be like, your uh, car crashes into another car. And then and they're while, kissing. Yeah, well, they're kissing <laughs> while there's like smoke coming out yeah. of her. And you're like, oh, just remodeled the car. They're kissing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, look, they met each other. Soulmates. Yeah. They're yeah. stuck. They're glued together. Opposites attract, especially <laughs> if they're like different colors or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm down. Let's do it. Let's start crashing cars today. Yeah. I love I love writing and coming up with content. It's one of my favorite things to do. Do I like that? Mm. I like it once I know what the idea is. Like once I know the like I I have my small moments of like aha yeah. let's go with this and yeah. I get creative but that's not really my driver. But it seems like for you it really is. Yeah, like that's what's crazy is um growing up as a kid I fucking hated English. I hated English so much. Like the like speaking it the or subject, writing it. Oh, the subject. Okay. So like learning about grammar and like prepositions and all that. Like I actually know a lot of like theoretical classroom stuff because, you know, like when you're in an Asian household, you, gotta, you learn everything like it's math. So even like uh, uh, 
even English, you like break it apart. That's a past participle. You know, there's all these things and you, and you dissect it all. And I'm like, what's all this freaking useless information? And now after through all the, the, t- the films that we've, we've, we've wrote all the sketches that we wrote, like understanding that you can approach English from a creative writing perspective. Um, it really opened up my love for English. And it's, it's almost like I'm painting, you know, like when I, when I write anything, I'm painting, I'm sketching, I'm drawing, I'm building a clay model. And the more words or the more ways I could rearrange words and uh, get people to emote, like I become more and more creative. And I wished English was taught like that in school. Whereas like in the beginning, like, you know, when, when you, when people are told to write things, I don't know how they teach it now, but when I was a kid, when you're told to write things, the first thing that the teacher looks at is never the content. The first thing is no period here, no comma here. This is spelled wrong, blah, 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 blah. And you, you have all these red markings, right? And you just throw the paper back to a kid <laughs> instead of reading for That's what the, that, but, that most, teacher's a dick. No, but a lot of people are like that. It's all about the rules first, right? Versus they're not even looking at the content. Because what if there was a second grader that was talking about how and he was drawing like a parallel between – um, the ups and downs of a sun, of the sunrise, and, it, and it's a life cycle. And he realizes that every single day it's like a new start of, of the new day. And he, and he loves to see that the, the colors of the sun, like when you, as you come up, it's brighter. When you come down, there's the purples and the oranges, right? He spells orange wrong. There's a lot of periods or whatever. But if you read that and if you're listening for content, you're like, this seven-year-old is deep and he's smart. Like I would grade him as a better writer than someone that's like, the chicken crossed the road, period. He then flapped his wings, period. You know, it's like this guy's not creative at all and he has zero content in what he's writing. This guy has a ton of content. And if I were to teach an English class, that's how I would start it. Yeah. I would have everyone like write what you want, what you're passionate about. And then my the next part of it, I think instead of correcting things, I would actually develop it with the student. Like, hey, tell me more about your even with the guy with the boring ass chicken story. Like, tell me more about the chicken. Like, does the chicken have a name? Why, why did he want to cross the road? Did, was he feeling a certain way? Did he have a, uh, and he goes, oh, he was like running. I'm like, why is it because uh, a tiger is chasing him or does he have diarrhea? Like, what is that? And then help him develop more, like pull it out of him. And then later, maybe in fifth or sixth grade, when before you need to start taking like your, I don't know, like those PSATs or SATs, then I teach them the rules. But then now they're creative versus the way it's taught, at least how I was taught. It's all rules. So you're just so stuck in this box and it's it's hard to get creative once you're once the rules are already put around you. Really? For me, um, yeah. for me, I see it a little bit different. Yeah. Um, I kind of like that it's taught this way because the way I like to operate, I'm like, tell me the rules, give me all your rules, let me figure it out the way you want me to, and cool. And now I go, now where do I get fun? Mm-hmm. Now how I can how can I like because now I have all my foundation set, you know, and now I'm approaching it the right way. Now I can get creative. And in school, they also teach you in different, uh, like there's different styles of writing. Like you have the grammar, but then you have creative writing classes. Like there's different, and then you have literature. So there's different like subjects to English. Yeah. Yeah. And they all suck to me. Maybe you just had shitty teachers. Cause I've had, I had a teacher in sixth grade. Um, I was never, I'm still not a good writer, but Uh, she would obviously focus on punctuation, but that's the shit you learn like in fourth grade, you know? So by sixth grade, now we're working on the creative stuff. And one of my friends, he was a really good writer. He, he was like a bookworm. So of course his, his reading comprehension is really good. His writing's really good. So when he would turn in his paper, she's like, wow, you have a lot of errors, but your writing is beautiful. You know? So I think it really does depend on the teacher. And they say your writing is beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. And she was just like, and she was known to be a hard teacher Teacher, and she was kind of mean and that's the kind that those are the teachers you hated because they challenged you so much but at the end of the school year you're like damn i learned a lot with that person you know and when you grow up you're like wow i really respected that teacher that was that teacher but yeah she was just like there's a lot of grammatical errors punctuation punctuation errors and stuff she's like but you write very beautifully i'm gonna help you like uh, let's keep working on that that's awesome yeah i think i'm i think taika's gonna have a really good time because uh i know what to look for now And I know what was missing for me. What do you mean he's going to have a good time? Like a good time in life? In school. Oh, okay. Because like, you know, my mom doesn't speak English. So she's just looking at a number, right? She goes, what? You didn't get an A? That's bad. 
how do we get you an A? And not really developing the skill behind it, you know? So I think with that type of mindset, you're just focusing on the grade instead of working on how do I present myself on a piece of paper, which yeah. is ultimately what English is about. I remember in junior high, my seventh, seventh grade class, we had to do a science project and we had to write this um, paper, but it's so fucking boring. So I wrote a rap song for all three pages. And it, it was, I think it was about like magnets or something or, or, or like an electromagnetic thing. And then like, you know, there's like polar ends, positive, negative. So I wrote the whole thing into a rap song and everything rhymed. And uh, when I turned it in, the teacher told me to rewrite it versus a teacher going, oh, shit, this kid's creative as a motherfucker. And maybe getting with my English teacher and figuring out how to further develop this. Because if I got that, if I read, like, I actually want to go through all the Taika's homework. Because if I can see something that I'm like, man, this guy has something special. I want to help nurture it. Yeah. Because every other kid, I'm like, man, every, one of the, every other kid is going to write some boring ass fucking shit, regurgitate what's in the book. And... And then like, and I would be like, I bet you, I'll, I'll read like a girl's paper. I'm like, you got a hundred? What the fuck? Let me see your paper. And I read it. I'm like, bitch, fucking just regurgitated the book. I'm, I'm going to do something fucking fresh. Yeah. And um, I do something fresh and I get a bad grade. Yeah. That's awesome though that you were like that at such a, like a, such a young age. I was never a rebel like that. Was that considered a rebel? Yeah, absolutely. Or oh. like, I don't know, thinking outside the box, a rebel. It's all kind of the same thing. Like you're just not, you're going against the grain. Like it's <laughs> against the grain. <laughs> uh, on that note. I just like a, having a good that's time. That's a good note. That's a good note. Wait, 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 wait. Against the grain. We're going to pause uh, and we're going to introduce our final sponsor. Okay. And our next sponsor, Glossier, one of my personal favorites, just because uh, the packaging is so damn cute. It, it, they have makeup. They have skincare line. I absolutely love it. But in addition, and this is like the extra big, big thing and the reason why I really love them is that they have high quality products. So not only do they look really cute and you can take pictures with it and feel really girly, but the ingredients that they use, it's high quality. I absolutely love it. I'm currently using their milk, Milky Jelly Cleanser and I just found out that it's one of their top sellers. Oh, cool. Um, they did a ton of research trying to figure out different skin types, trying to figure out um, you know, problem areas for people. And after a year of just developing this product, they came out with it. And I absolutely love it. I can tell that a bunch of attention went into making this product. I wear makeup on a daily. And I and the first thing I do when I get home, I obviously take off my bra and I change out of oh, my- Oh yeah, you do. Yeah, out of my day clothes into something comfortable. And the second thing is I'm always washing my face just because I use really good makeup, but I still feel like there's a layer of like junk on like a, a, a just the day is still the on day my is face there, yeah whether it's the air the pollution exactly whatever, yeah. exactly so uh once i use the milky jelly cleanser it immediately gets rid of all that oil it takes away the makeup and i just feel like i have baby skin again i absolutely love it i'm you a do fan have baby skin oh thank you so much um and i love their philosophy because glossier believes that beauty starts uh, from skin first then the makeup so even the attention that they give to the makeup is really good. Like this is makeup that makes you uh, that that is benefiting your skin. Um, so, yeah, you guys, for everyone listening right now, for you guys to get that glowy, dewy skin for yourself, visit glo visit glossier.com slash podcast slash bail and you're going to get 10 percent off your first order again that's glossier.com slash podcast slash bail uh for those of you that don't know how to spell it like myself it's g-l-o-s-s-i-e-r.com slash podcast slash bail but what you like doing what i think i've always been like that just uh I think yeah I'm no i like that about you i'm yeah. giving you a compliment i'm yeah, saying yeah, that's yeah. really tight that you were that way because i was not a goody two shoes i was never a teacher's pet but i was never that i was never you like i would just listen to the rules and i'm like okay that's what we got to do fine i'm gonna see what your agenda is what my agenda is and see how we can make that work yeah so i always like got my way but while still following the rules i i, I thought i was doing that and but then, you're not because you're not getting your way. You're doing your own shit completely. So you play JK Party with me a lot. Yeah, and you always do your own shit. Exactly. Completely. But I always go, what are the rules? You tell me those rules. No, you and, don't even and then, listen and, to the and rules. And then I go, okay, cool. I'm about to do what I'm going to do. Anything else you want to add? People always go, no, that's it. That's final. Well, we don't think we and have to explain. And then the first thing I pop out, it's like, oh my God, Bart, what well, the hell is that? I don't want that? you to throw common sense 
out of the out of the fucking room you know like if you're not supposed to chirp like i'm like i want complete silence then you'll be like or i'm like no speaking at all okay which most people take as complete silence mm -hmm. but you go rough 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 and i'm like do I have to fucking say no animal noises too? And you're like, yeah, you have to. You have to specify everything. So it's like, I'm going to explain myself for fucking two hours. I would just say, just say no noise. This is why. I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. <laughs> this is why lawyers write the way that they write because of people like you. I would actually make a good lawyer. You would make a good lawyer. You'd make an awesome fucking lawyer. Because when I read one thing, I already have like 10 options and I'm like. You better be careful what you're saying because it could be taken many different ways. Yeah, you're going to make a good genie in a bottle, too. I love fucking around. Do you remember? There's no this, shit. <laughs> there's this uh, Crayola, like, there's this, like, uh, back when they had, like, these Crayola markers and they're, like, all different colors. And then they had, I remember. Uh, you ain't back in the day. That's always been them, you weirdo. No, but they came out with this new, new one. Okay. And in these Crayola markers, there's this new new where there's a white pen. Oh, yeah. I know the white pen. So the white pen. It changes the colors. Well, you draw. There's one where you draw on the paper <laughs> and you don't see anything until you get another pen and then you go over it and then it comes out. I was so fucking tempted to turn in a homework like that where I write five pages of an essay. You're such an asshole. <laughs> and then they're going to be like, what's this part? And you're going to be like, fuck you, bitch. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> exactly. So, so they I, wa <laughs> I wanted to, but then at that point, I, I knew I was already like at the teacher's wits end. I know my mom was so tired of my shit. <laughs> and I just, I was just like, fuck, man. And I'm like, I really want to so fucking bad that i never did it but oh my God. but when that when they came out with that box of markers that was the first thing i wanted to do i was like fuck yeah but i'm like people that's don't know how taika people right people don't know how to have fun that's taika right now i know and that's why it's so hard for me to get mad at him a lot of times i see him do his little projects <laughs> like <laughs> like yesterday he was uh he was watching all these basketball and like dude, dude perfect. perfect and then they're doing all their trick shots yeah he gets the rim and the the rim in our in our living room and he pulls it down and he starts dragging i'm like taika what are you doing i like, put it back because i don't want him to scratch the floor and then i saw him like pull and try to go towards the bedroom and i'm like oh i know what he wants to do he wants to take the basketball hoop put it in the bedroom because that's where we're watching tv so he can watch tv while shoot at the same time and i'm like that's exactly how because when i was a kid and i used to watch all kinds of kung fu movies right like jet lee jackie chan all that and those old school Chinese movies are always set in like some dynasty area, like a period piece where it's like all these crazy looking like Chinese outfits. I don't have anything like that. So what do I wear? I wear my mom's Buddhist ceremonial dress that she, <laughs> she so I would like take, oh I would take God. it out because it looks kind of like that where it has like the cross like kimono collar things and then it has like the big sleeves. So I would go to my mom's Buddhist thing, like put it on. And then I would jump off the couch and make my own like, <laughs> like those the type noises. Of, those noises. So I knew exactly <clears throat> where where that was coming from. He has to play basketball watch, while watching basketball. Yeah. So, I just, so I just helped him carry. It into I really room. do try to respect that, even though I don't understand him because that's not how I was. I just understand that he's his own little person. So anytime I get pissed at him. I, I'm like, OK, I'm being selfish because I'm making it about myself. And then I look at what he's trying to do and I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> okay yeah you can turn over all your little fucking bicycles and trucks and shit and just leave them in the center of the room because he has a heart attack so i just let him do it just as long as i see he's not going to kill himself or he's not going to break something that's expensive in the house i'm yeah. like fine have at it jesus christ because i know he's up to something Every fucking just, minute of the day. <laughs> I know. I like, just don't know what he's up to. Every 10 so seconds. So I try to support what he's up to. But every I, 10 seconds, it changes. It's So yesterday, he had a little Yukolt, right? He drank some Yukolt. And it's like a bottle Yakult. that's like... Yakolt. Yakolt. Sorry. That's like about five inches tall. You want to know how to say in Chinese? <clears throat> <laughs> he just made a no sound. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it? Yang le, uh, yang, what the fuck? Yang le duo. Why? That was the first time I heard Chinese on these headphones. So that threw me off. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Who's that guy? Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, but anyways, keep going. But it's your cult. It's spelled out. Why do you make up your own word? I don't know. That's what it says on the, on the bottom in Chinese. Yang le duo. Oh, it says it in Chinese? If you go to Taiwan, yeah, I'll say yang oh. le duo on there. Okay, fine. So, yeah, so he had a little bottle. Um, and again, this is the day that he was watching Dude Perfect in yeah. the morning. So this is my time now. He has it. 
And um, you know how we have that little basket right by the tape by the TV stand that he holds all his little toys. Toys, yeah, the white okay. basket. Yeah, so it's like this white wire basket. It's very dainty, like it's shitty, right? So he stands on top of that, like fucking, like he's balancing. Uh, he stands on top of that with his little chubby feet, and then he gets the Yakult bottle. He puts it on top of the highest speaker. He steps back, he gets his football, and now uh, he's trying to do trick shots, right? I see. So I'm like, okay, so I get it. But then that became too simple for him. So yeah. he got your roller, and then he put it on top. <laughs> he put it on top of the awesome. speaker yeah. with the Yakult bottle, right? He hits it. Rah! And then that got boring. So now he has to stand up on top of our TV console so it could be like crazier. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And he's like, ha. And he just smiles. I'm like, holy crap, man. Can you just like, I love that about him. I love all the ideas he has. Like, trust me. I love it. He's creative. Like, I love it. I love it so much. I love that he's not like me. I fucking adore that he's not like me. But the tired mom side is like, can you just fucking sit there and just (laughs) be a good boy? Yeah. You know, but I'm just like, I I got to take the good with the bad. I remember we went to Smorgasburg uh, last weekend. And um, Leia comes and she's just chilling there, eating. And you're just like, she's a beautiful princess. Yeah. And then you look over and Taika is stomping every single dirty puddle that he could find while chasing pigeons the whole time. And I'm like, you guys are like a month or two apart. And this one is for sure going to be like the 4.0 student teacher's pet. Everyone loves her. And then Tyke is going to be the one sitting in the corner because you misbehave all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I already see their futures going like like this. Yeah. <laughs> this is Leia. So it's going to be like this. <laughs> and then Tyke will maybe. No, Tyke is probably going to go like this. And then maybe Tyke will go back up. But if Leia's he doesn't go to keep, jail, if he doesn't go to jail, <laughs> he's not going to go to jail. He's, he's got gonna, love and understanding true, at home. That's true. You go to jail because you're lacking that not you're lacking, but something in your life was lacking. Yeah. Okay, there was some misdirection, some misguidance, something there happened, but I'm going to do my very best. I'm gonna I didn't do my go best, to jail. Yeah. I know, but you're not crazy like me and Taika. You didn't go to jail. I should have. But you didn't. So I was you already so know creative the- that I outsmarted the police. Well, you know what signs to look for, okay? Yeah, I and think I-, I think that's why I, I feel really comfortable with him um, because I know how he is because he's just like me and I know what was missing in my life to help nurture me. So, like, I do want to see all his homework and see everything that he's up to so I can see not just what's on the surface, but what he's really about. I want I definitely want to put him in a school where there's a bunch of white teachers. Why? Because <laughs> I feel like so at they, least so when, there's call more, chink? when there's more what? No, what? <laughs> what? I just feel like when there's more minorities, like yeah. we're used to like a hierarchy, we're used to kids behaving a certain way. So we get frustrated if it's not happening a certain way. But at least with with uh, more uh, progressive or white people, um, maybe even like generational Asians too, like Japanese American Asians, like like order cultures with a lot of order. Uh, no, that they've they've let go oh, of the I traditional, see. yeah, 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 and now they've become more Americanized, more liberal, and they can like look for like and, those little things. Yeah, and they they re- they use like they they use logic. Yeah, you know, because I don't I don't operate with logic, but yeah. I operate with more logic than my parents' generation. Yeah. So on and so forth, right? Yeah. Um, you want teachers that drink kombucha and stuff. Yeah, because then I feel like they're going to appreciate Taika for Taika and not have this mold of a of the perfect kid. And, and try, try to force to, him in. Yeah. That's what happened to me. <clears throat> I can see that. I can clearly see that. Um, and as a and as, uh, rule follower as I was, I was still being put in a mold and I felt it. Yeah. But I wasn't a rule breaker, but I still didn't feel like I need... I was that mold. You think uh, <clears throat> when... If we were like both in first grade and there's a kid like me, you think you would have had the hots for me or you would have thought I was a nuisance? I would have thought you were a nuisance. Really? I'd be like, get away from me. You're attracting negative attention. I don't want negative attention because I have my own agenda, you know? What's your your agenda? Uh, Just to have fun in my own way, but I don't want to be caught. So I was still doing my stuff. What do you mean? Like, I, I don't know. Like if I was like cheating on a test or if I was like doing stuff that the teacher didn't want me to do or like I brought a toy to school and I wanted to play with it. You'd yeah. be the stupid idiot kid because I'm being sneaky playing with my toy and you'd be the idiot like, what's that? No, no, like, no. Oh, you, you know I'm sneaker. sneaky. I'm sneaky as fuck. Uh, you know, I brought my friend's cat to school, remember? 
<laughs> I'm fucking sleeping. Okay, we probably would be friends. You'd probably be like, I'd be like, check this out. Yeah. And I'd be like this. I'd be like, oh, shit. You're a cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we would be friends then. Yeah, yeah. If you're sneaky like that, we would be friends. Because I'm a good kid. So no yeah. one would ever look to me as being the rule breaker. Ever. Ever, ever. Like, if it was me pinned to, like, the teacher's pet, then, of course, they're going to look at me. Yeah. But if I'm not, <laughs> then, yeah. So then, like, yeah, we would have a good time. <laughs> One of the, I mean, I told the story so many times. I like but how much you crack yourself up. <laughs> no, because I, you know, I just thought of the story that uh, I told before. But um, when I look back, I just can't believe that I did that, which is in, in fourth grade, like, everyone was bringing the magnets remember oh my God. like everyone's magnets and they go into the sandbox because you attract those black fuzzies so people were trying to collect those like those iron particles which is what we found out later on but those black fuzzies and i'm like man those are some pussy ass magnets where's the biggest magnet i've ever seen <gasps> on the back of a speaker you're so dumb so my dad he you're had the dumb. my dad has the home stereo like we do but then back then um the technology wasn't as good so the subwoofer is like a big 12 inch subwoofer <laughs> so <laughs> i remember when my dad went to work i pulled off the mesh screen i drilled it all off i disconnected the wires in the back and i put it on and i try to figure out a way to fit that into my backpack with my books and i realized i couldn't so i'm like fuck it i'm gonna leave all my books at home just for one day and i remember that day every single book that the teacher told us to pull out i didn't have it so I kept getting in trouble over and over and over. Like, we pulled out this book, pull out your social studies book, pull out your math book. And I didn't have anything. And they're like, Bart, you didn't bring any single book to class today? And every, and every time I was just like, it's going to be so you're worth all, it at yeah. recess. because You're didn't all stuck to your metal chair and shit. You're like, it's going to be so worth it's it. It's going to be so like, worth it. Just get fucking undone. And you then, know how we put our backpacks on the back of the seat? Yeah, yeah. And then I remember, I'm just, just wait till recess. It's going to be so worth it. So when recess came, I unzipped it. I brought the whole thing, in, and I was going to town in that sandbox. I was—it was probably like a big, You're ten, such a loser. like ten or twelve inch <laughs> thing, and I'm just going around. I was collecting all kinds of those black fuzzies, and then <laughs> I remember when we we're waiting in line to go back in class. I was holding it next to me, and the teacher's like, "Bart, what's that?" I'm like a speaker, and then she was like, "Give that to me," and I'm like, "What the fuck?" Because she took it away like it was contraband. So I don't even know you're not allowed to bring speakers to school. But like, uh, that's what I hated about school. Like they just make up rules on their own spot. Cause like, on the, on the thing, it's just like, no, they don't make no, gu on like, spot. no guns, no knives. They don't even know what it is, where you got it from. Like they're, they, she why did they a take good job. It, why did they take it that away from me? She did a good job because you're fucking Bart. She's like, what, did you steal it from someone? Does this belong to any of the, the school speakers here? Like you're a fucking nuisance. So, You're the troublemaker. So they called my parents. <laughs> Good thing. Good job, teachers. And then my parents came and picked me up to pick up with me and the speaker. And then my dad's like, where the fuck did you get that speaker from? And I'm like, it's yours. <laughs> and then I got my ass beat, of course. You're so stupid. You didn't what? know that like that's I think that's too why I liked <laughs> That my parents were like, this is my shit. This is your shit. You got to ask for permission where you were like, I don't understand that. Because it taught me to respect other people's shit. No, because in my family, our family shit is our family but shit. But that's why you fucking got the speaker and you fucked it all up. We never did shit like that to my dad's stuff because he knows as kids, we're not going to take care of his stuff the same way he would. Yeah. So for him, he was like, you need to ask for permission. That way he can keep tabs. Not that he's going to say no. He can monitor if it's going to be safe. Yeah. He can keep tabs where it is. He can also check if it's something that we can play with. Uh, if it's expensive or not, like he keeps tabs. My mom's the same but way it's also, and I love it. But I never fucked with my dad's stuff that was going to affect his work. Like I never messed with his uh His speaker's going to affect work, his work his because work he can't uniform. come home and relax from a fucking stressful day because he can't listen to TV or whatever. So you fucked with his life. The plan was I was going <laughs> to go home. And put it back. Put it back. And then he would but nothing. But you're a kid. You're nothing, dumb. No, I was really, I was really handy. My parents got divorced when I was six. I was already vacuuming and washing cars by the time I was six. I was good at all that stuff. I already knew that in our toaster oven at the bottom, there's an like oil collection tray. I'll take that out. Like I was so handy already. I, the plan, if my teacher, Mrs. Anderson, didn't freaking cock block me, it was going to go right back and I would have the best day. I, yes, I got in trouble for not bringing a single book to class, but I would have the best day ever. But that's yeah. that's what we have to look forward to with Taika. Oh, my God. Oh my god.
Like, I wouldn't be surprised if one day we come home and all of the cushions of our couch are unzipped and all the fillings are all out all, everywhere, all over the place. Because, I, like, I don't know, maybe he wanted to play, like, Goose Day or something. But I also love that. About oh, it. my. <laughs> as you say that, my heart is, like, I'm getting anxiety. Why? Just thinking about it. Like, just, yeah, he's, it's just giving me anxiety. I remember when I first watched Aladdin. I took my mom's bath mat and I would go in the backyard, try to jump off a wall and try to fly with the carpet. <laughs> it didn't work, of course, but I would just if my mom would have came home and looked through the window and see me just jumping from the wall with the carpet like over and over and over. <laughs> I think if she, I'd be like, Mom, you have to watch the movie to get what I'm trying to do. You know what I would do? Beat his ass. <laughs> no. As a kid. What? I would get shopping carts. Yeah. And then, you know, the basket part, right? I would flip it over, yeah, and then we would just play inside like it's a little house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm not affecting anything. I'm actually contained in my little area. But did you know that that's the supermarket's pet peeves is a flipped over shopping cart? Well, I mean, in the hood, there's a bunch of supermarkets. I know so, they all. Hate I mean, that. not supermarkets, uh, shopping carts. And they all hate that. So you're actually pissing them off like crazy. I didn't bring this, the shopping cart. I just made it useful. Yeah, but, but you're an accomplice. And then I put it back on the sidewalk you're so that accomplice. the guy that's driving around in the truck collecting them, he, yeah. he collects like 10 of them from my block. But you're an accomplice in the crime before I'm you not. You know what else I would do? What else would you do? I would get a bunch of blankets and then a chair and then I would make a fort and I'd make the longest fort. Oh, that's really good. You never did forts? I, I, I did forts. Yeah. Or like if we got like a big appliance yeah. and it came in a big box, I'm like, fuck yeah, you know what that means? I get to make a house. So I'd get a Sharpie and then I would write, I would draw a door, windows and stuff. Oh, and then I'd cool. get like an X-Acto knife yeah. and then I'd cut it. And then I would have a house for like weeks and I would sleep in there. Oh, that's cool. No one ever got mad at me then. I, I made a <laughs> fort too. My mom got mad at me. What did you use? No, I just used the dining table and I got her comforter. And I just threw it over the dining table. That's probably why. And then it's her comforter. <laughs> yeah. And I threw it over the dining table and I was oh just hiding God. underneath. And my mom came home. She's like, why the fuck is the comforter over the dining table? This is where we eat. Yeah. I'm like, because I'm hiding from the bad guys. Yeah. No, I never got So instead trouble. of getting my back and figuring out what the bad guys are and making sure they don't come in, she beat my ass. Why would she be? Yeah, that's that's just a whole other story. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't smack them like that. But I, I guess I can see why, too. Because this is probably like fucking strike number 200 in literally like one day i would yeah i also wish that um like if she lived in the time of instagram every single one of my oh, inventions would, would have been a dope ass picture because i just had so many things like i remember uh because i watched sword in the stone i got my mom's cleaver and i buried it in the backyard <laughs> so it's just the handle sticking out and i'm like mom try to pull it out if you pull out you can become queen of the house and then uh, sometimes my mom would laugh but a lot of times I just got my, like, that's kind of like more harmless. Yeah, absolutely. It's harmless. Is yeah. that the same cleaver she threw at your head? <laughs> Probably. But there's like, I just always had ideas like that all the time. So I always loved projects for school because I couldn't wait. It was like, finally, I was given the task to be creative and create something. And I think I've always just like creating things. No, that wasn't me at all. What did I like to do? I don't know, but I was definitely not doing that. I like to put on shows. Are you an entertainer? Yeah, I think wow. I was an entertainer. I like to put on shows. I like to play music. Um, what else did I do? I like to draw. Like everything was contained to me. I think because I sucked at drawing, I couldn't. I had other ideas. Oh. I was never good at drawing, and I think I also never learned how to draw the right way. But I was always good at building stuff. Like really good. Oh my God, you're giving me so much anxiety. I think I'm gonna have to wrap this up. <laughs> Why? I think we're gonna have to wrap this up though. Oh my God, I just, ah, oh, Taika, Taika, Taika. You know you love him like uh, crazy. Maybe if we And had, if like, you had a goody two shoes kid, I think you'd get bored. Yeah, I would. Um, maybe we do need to make a number two just so that they can keep each other company and not have too many bright ideas. But what if the second one is goody two shoes and we're like, oh, thank God. And then Taika contaminates the motherfucker. And now we got two freaking rascals. That's okay because the goody two shoes is never going to be as bad as Taika. Because he or just doesn't naturally what think if the that other, way. The other one is it's even just crazier. Best. <laughs> yeah, the, damn. Oh my God. Then I, I kind of want that. Because <laughs> I think <laughs> that's awesome. Because if he becomes, if he's just as rowdy as Taika, I think we need to change our bells to like the bastard crew or like oh, the rascals. The fuck it ups. Yeah, or something. We got we need new branding. The fuck tards. We need, oh or God. it needs to be the bear logo. 
but then with the eye patch yeah, or something. I was just going to yeah. say that. Yeah, we got to change the branding. But a little bit uh, of the stuffing coming out of the side yeah, where yeah. the button's just kind of hanging. Yeah, it's got to be something because our, our family is not that CUNY. I know. We're well, it's CUNY to... in a different way. It is. It's very, it's Malcolm in the Middle for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking exactly. love that type of family. That's yeah. why Malcolm in the Middle, that show is like one of my favorites because it was just so odd. Yeah. And it was so anti white picket fence. The, yeah. The, the nuclear, is that what they're called? The nucleus family? Like the, I just know, like the Joneses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that kind of family. Yeah. So, like, I love that. Like, I like being the anti everything all the time. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're thinking of having kids, uh, you should definitely do it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But it really is a lot of fun. And it I is. do enjoy it. I love being a mom. I love watching his brain work. <laughs> Just like being able to see him. Like that's what I like about putting my phone down. Because uh, when you're trying to half dad, it's still half your agenda, right? And then so it just ends up him being annoying. Like, fuck, I got to answer this email. It get is. away from it me. It does, yeah. But then the minute you put your phone down and you're 100% with him and you're watching what he's doing, you're like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because then now it's not annoying because you're present with him. Yeah. And you're like, this guy's trying to build a ladder out of the cushions. Cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 He gets really creative. Yeah. Um, yeah. But on that note, thank God we ended it happily because <laughs> like I was already getting a lot of anxiety just hearing your stories and kind of like getting a taste of what Tyke is turning into. But no, on a good, happy note, um, thank you everyone for listening. I love, love, love sharing uh, this part of my life with you guys and I can talk about Taika all freaking day and I can just talk about, you know, our future plans with Taika every fucking minute of every day. Um, so I thank you and I appreciate you for listening. I hope you guys got a little bit of insight into either parenthood or or what it is to have a toddler or or, or what it is to be a troubled kid. Like when you were a kid that always got into trouble and now you're kind of a creative adult and seeing what your offspring might potentially look like. I hope you got some insight on that. Um, but let us know how we're doing. Leave a comment. Make sure to rate uh, our podcast five stars so that we know that you like this stuff and we continue doing it. And um, yeah, a huge shout out to our personal brand, Barbell Brigade. We are a fitness lifestyle brand. Uh, we do have a clothing line, as you can see, Bart wearing one of our dope ass shirts. Always wearing barbell. Yeah, if you're ever in the LA area, make sure to stop by our gym. We have a dope boutique powerlifting it, boutique sounds like it's fancy but it's not it just means like it's unique it's with special unique. with special with, it's a specialty gym yeah so if you're in la hit us up uh at our gym if you're not in la it's all good we got you covered just go to barbellbrigade.com and um yeah we got and if you want clothes. yeah if you want the best pre-workout on the planet in my opinion the barbell brigade pre-workout there's so much stuff in there 500 milligrams of vitamin c three different species of mushrooms there's all kinds of stuff in there uh go get that at barbellbrigade.com and thank you to our sponsor, Grove. For a limited time, when you guys go to grove.com, co slash bill, you will get free five-piece cleaning set from Mrs. Meyer and Grove, a $30 value. Ooh. And also special thanks to our other sponsor, Glossier. Uh, to get that glowy, dewy skin for yourself, go to glossier.com slash podcast slash bill uh, to learn more and take the quiz to find out your ultimate Glossier skincare routine. Again, Go to Glossier, that's spelled G-L-O-S-S-I-E-R dot com slash podcast slash bear. And you're going to get 10% off your first order. All right. So again, it's Glossier dot com slash podcast slash bear. Thank you. Thank you.